Okay, this tutorial is going to explain how you can use uh, different databases in order to download crystal structures for your research or for your schoolwork. The database that we're going to show you the tutorial for is the Crystallography Open Database, which can be found by typing crystallography.net slash cod into your browser. Uh, the reason that I'm going to be doing the tutorial for this is because this is freely available software. Right? This is an open database. People put their compounds up here for anybody to use. And there are other open databases. For example, the American Mineralogist Crystal Structure Database is good, especially for minerals, as the name might suggest. Uh, you can find these, and it has a way to search for them and download them. And then if you want, you can actually pay for other software packages. For example, Fizz Karlsruhe puts out the ICSD, the International Crystal Structure Database. Um, this database is valuable because it has a very comprehensive list of compounds. Uh, they're very carefully curated, so things that don't look right, if somebody solved the structure incorrectly or something just doesn't look correct, it's curated and those are uh, flagged or even removed. And there's other things, again, this, is, this specializes in inorganic compounds. You have the Cambridge Structure Database, which specializes in small molecule organic and then metal organic structures, and this is an enormous database, almost a million entries. And then you have other ones like Pearson's Crystal Structure Database, which is somewhat comparable to the uh, ICSD. Um, so these latter three, Pearson's, the, CS, the Cambridge Structure Database, and the ICSD are all, uh, you have to pay for them. Whereas the American Mineralogist and the Crystallography Open Database are available. So how do you go ahead and use the Crystallography Open Database? Um, so once you've typed and you've gone here, go ahead and click the search button on the left. Now that you're in the search area, you can search for your different uh, compounds or crystal structures in a variety of different ways. For example, you could just put in text, either one or two words. You could put, um, for example, rock salt. I don't know if I need to put those in two boxes or if I can do it in one. When you're ready, go ahead and hit send. And what it's going to do is it's going to search through any text available and it's going to say anytime that it mentions rock salt, for example, here in the title of the journal article where this was published, uh, it was used. And so there's no guarantee that your compound is going to be rock salt. For example, this is not rock salt. This calcium uh, thallium oxide compound is not a rock salt. But they use rock salt in the structure, right? So uh, you have to be a little bit careful when you do it that way. So let's go back. Um, this works pretty well for like mineral names. You could put in like jadeite, for example. Um, if that's a specific type of mineral that you wanted to search for, you could punch that in and see it come up. Yeah, so again, here, if it's available, it's going to pull it up. Now you'll notice, again, this is came from the title, and in the title they're studying several different minerals. Um, so you need to make sure that the, the mineral that you're looking for is in fact the one, because as you see here, you've got different compounds here. You've got the aluminum, sodium, silicate, uh, the iron sodium silicate, you got the calcium magnesium silicate. So you need to make sure that you're getting the compounds you're looking for. It's going to pull up anything that has the text in it. A more common way to search for crystal structures instead of using text is to uh, look for it by elements. So let's say that you did want to find that rock salt structure, sodium chloride. You'd come down here and you can put up to eight elements. So let's put sodium and chlorine since that's the rock salt, right? Now, if you hit send right now, it's going to pull up sodium and chlorine along with uh, anything else that might be present, right? So in this case, it has aluminum, it has chlorine, it has sodium, oxygen, silicon. What we really wanted was just something with sodium and chlorine. So what you can do to prevent that from happening is come back here, and here when it says number of distinct elements, minimum to maximum, we want something that has at least two different elements and no more than two different elements. And we, were, we already told it that it needs to have sodium and chlorine. So this will only pull up compounds that are sodium chloride. And you see that when we do so, there's many, many entries, right? We can scroll down, we can go to multiple pages. And what you find is that even though we only looked for sodium chloride, there's different types of sodium chloride that might come up. Um, in this case, they're all FM3 barbs, so they're all the same type. Um, if you look at other compounds, well, no, how about this one? This, so there's a difference, right? The first one is FM3 barm. Then here you have this one from 2003. Okay, they're doing structural refinements of high pressure phases in germanium dioxide, right? So basically, I imagine when they went to high pressures, they're claiming in this paper that they saw it go from the conventional FM3 barm crystal structure to something different under high pressures. So be careful that even though the sodium chloride structure, you know, the formula looks the same, you can have different structures reported, and that's shown by having different space groups. When you're ready to, you know, let's say this is the one that you wanted to look at, you go ahead and download the SIF. 
and if you've opened if you've already installed Vesta when you click that civ file it will pull it up and you'll be able to see the crystal structure and we'll do a subsequent video on how to use Vesta other things to watch for is sometimes it'll describe over here what the conditions were where it was collected for example right here it's telling you uh, that it was collected under different temperatures or pressures right here's a series where they did them at different uh, temperatures Okay. If you want more details on these, you can clip the crystallographic open database ID number. It'll often try and pull up, uh, if you have JMOL loaded, it'll pull up the crystal structure if it's able to. And you can actually see what it would look like if you don't want to have Vesta. I suggest downloading Vesta. It's just a better way to show it for sure. And it'll show you more information about the crystal structure. Again, here's the lattice parameters, the angles between the axes. It'll calculate cell volume for you. Um, it shows you quite a bit of information. Here's information from if there's been changes made to it over time. So that is how you use the crystallographic open database. And again, if you wanted to search for other things, you could search by, by volume of the unit cell. Uh, sorry, that's volume of the journal, excuse me. You could search by volume of the unit cell right here between minimum and maximum. You could search for compounds, any compounds that have lattice parameters within certain ranges. Um, so this is a pretty useful tool and for what it's worth, the fact that it's free, it's pretty terrific actually. You could do something very similar with American Mineralogy, right? If you wanted to search for uh, a compound by mineral name, Muratite, it'll pull them up and just like before you can download a sieve file and just like before you can pull up this mineral, right? This Muratite mineral. Okay, so that's our video for today. Hope it's been helpful.